we go. Okay, it's um, uh, May 28th. It's uh, about 9.30 in the morning. Uh, we're just getting the sun through the trees up here. Uh, so, um, no chemtrails. Really a gorgeous day. No clouds of any kind. Uh, very unusual. Okay, so a video for your uh, consideration on cryptocurrencies. Uh, these are going to be an extremely hot uh, subject in the um, uh, developed internet connected world over the uh, summer and beyond. Uh, this is going to be due to a confluence of factors. The death of the uh, paper currencies through uh, the stupid management of um, Federal Reserve kind of guys, you know. Uh, they've really destroyed everything for everybody by their uh, pandering uh, to the 1%. And you can't blame them. The system is set up to um, uh, promote idiocy to the top and let it ride out until the idiocy is so idiotic it fails. <laughs> and we're right there now. Uh, so cryptocurrencies are a replacement um, that Universe provides for the um, failing uh, debt-based uh, uh, paper, or not paper, but debt-based sovereign uh, currencies, which are all digital anyway. Uh, so some, some interesting uh, points here to consider. Uh, you're going to hear about this thing called uh, BIP, B-I-P-148. It's a um, uh, protocol change uh, on the back end of uh, Bitcoin. Um, uh, listen to what's going on. There's official discussion on it in the Bitcoin circles. Uh, don't be um, uh, weirded out by it. It's not a particularly uh, frightful thing. It's not a hard fork. Uh, e e if you're really stupid, you can always lose Bitcoin, but you're not going to lose your Bitcoin because of BIP 148, uh, that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, but just um, uh, make sure you, you know, you're smart about how you deal with your crypto. It's uh, tricky stuff, right? And if you, if you don't understand it, it's scary. And if it's scary, don't worry about that so much, you know. I mean, we've always got to push through our fear in order to get anything to get done anyway. But um, if you don't understand it, uh, make sure you study that until you do understand it before you do something with it. Uh, go learn from other people's mistakes. There's a lot of people out there talking uh, about this stuff on the internet. Uh, so now, um, I wanted to describe uh, what's going on, in my opinion, at this point in history, so you get an idea of uh, where we're at and why uh, things seem to be coming unglued in general. Uh, we know that things are coming unglued to a certain extent because of the unknown energies from space that are zipping around the sun because the sun's in a contracting for, uh, phase at the moment. We're going into an ice age. More of these energies are coming on in and these energies are making humans batshit crazy. That's why there's all this contention and weird shit going on all the time around you. That's why people are just jittery beyond belief. Okay, and they're reacting oddly. And it has to do with a lot of that. Now, all of our institutions and everything else are also under stress because of the buttheads that have been in charge for so long. And we let buttheaddom take up until now we got the nothing but a reign of 1% of buttheadedness. And so we've all decided, okay, we've had it with buttheads. Uh, we're getting rid of this and uh, things are changing. And so we see that indeed things are changing around us. Now, uh, one of the ways that things are uh, changing rapidly is the gyrations, as you see in the financial system, as they try and manage what the hell they think they've got, got uh, their hands on. They don't understand it. The, the Fed, the academics, they don't have a clue as to the, any of this stuff. They can try to computer model all of this and imagine that they can fit this within their constructs. And so they're trying to, um, as the Soviet Union did, you know, control everything down to the gnat's ass through... Um, uh, committees and through controlling information and it's just going on its own and they have no control whatsoever about what's going to happen to this thing. And this thing is all of us doing all of our daily activities and we call this economics. They put this layer on top of it like uh, peanut butter on a chunk of bread and they put it on there real thick and they keep piling it up and they call it financial or fintech now. That's the new, new um, language for their financial thick peanut butter layer on top of the thin bread of all of us doing stuff. The more peanut butter on there, the more we're all weighed down and we can't do things. And so it gets uh, really nasty for all us guys. At some point, all of us guys that are the bread say, hey, enough of this. I don't want no more peanut butter. I'm not going to have it. We're there now. Um, this happened to relatives of ours, okay? Mine in particular. Uh, because my people, my 
uh, mother's people come from France um, by way of the um, uh, France and Portugal by way of the Azores and pirate ships. I swear to you, <laughs> it's a it's it's a long and weird story, but they're French back there, okay? And the French had this. Um, uh, they were sitting around one day and. Um, uh, you know, things were pretty tough. It was a harsh winter. Uh, the Germans had had uh, two or three years of uh, wheat crop failures, so they couldn't be buying wheat from the Germans. The Germans used to grow really good hard red wheat for really good bread, so the bread's getting kind of yucky and mealy. They're having to use this uh, southern wheat. They just don't know how to m make it go. And, uh, you know, things just are not going good for the French, and their money is just not worth shit. I mean, you know, there's all this stuff going on, and political and there's this new thing called the Industrial Revolution coming on up and it's causing problems and disruption and um, it, everybody is just not doing well. And so uh, one day, you know, they go and open up their doors and <coughs> go outside in the streets and they decide, okay, we're going to have a French Revolution or, or we're going to have a revolution and we're French, so we'll call it the French Revolution. And uh, that's what they did. And they went and they got all the buttheads in charge and off with their heads which was a good solution. That got rid of all the buttheads. Uh, but, you know, uh, you had a, a new crop <coughs> that came up that weren't buttheads. These guys were uh, avaricious um, uh, psychopaths and sociopaths uh, that took advantage of the mob mentality. So you gotta watch out for that. <laughs> you know, universe doesn't, doesn't let you have it easy. And so that's where we're at now, <coughs> not having it easy. So just like our relatives, just like my relatives back in France, who one day opened up the door and saw everybody going past them and wondering what the hell's happening. And, oh my God, it's a revolution. Well, hey, Ma, let me have my pitchfork. And so, you know, there you go, right? And uh, up there's uh, Bastille Day and all that, right? And so it's going to get hot this summer. Uh, now the communistas, the um, uh, wannabe Bolsheviks, the kids in the ninja suits, and they're not going to make it, uh, you know. <laughs> I, I've got problems. I've got things to say about what they're doing, but they've got real issues, uh, which we'll get into later on with uh, a side, ben a side little story here. Okay, uh, but at the moment, let's talk about uh, get back to the cryptos and talk about those. Historically, we're right at the edge. We might as well be in the French Revolution. Uh, we've got a failing food supply due to um, uh, weather conditions we don't understand. We're in a giant mass extinction. Um, we've got buttheads in charge degrading the money down to nothing. And we've got um, uh, strange ass UFOs popping up all over and all kinds of, of things going along in the woo woo world. All this stuff happening all at once. And, and Universe decides, okay, I like humans, I'd better give them something. So uh, Universe zing, sends a thought into the head of this guy, and his name is Satoshi Nakamoto, and we have cryptos. And so cryptos are um, an interesting idea because it takes away the uh, capacity of a few small number of people to control the um, uh, money system, which is our way of exchanging energy between each other. And why the hell is the Federal Reserve uh, Janet Yellen messing in my energy exchange between myself and my Safeway store, right? Or my local food co-op. Uh, you know, why are they intruding in there and taking a slice of everything I do? Why are they degrading the exchange I have with these people? We don't need them. And so we're pitching them out. And uh, at one of these historical turning points, you know, we could call this a global revolution because we're, we're not all French anymore. And so we might all want to be French. Uh, a lot of people do want to be French, but uh, we'll just call this a global revolution. And this global revolution is, um, uh, all revolutions are about money. <laughs> I don't care where you go. Uh, all revolutions and giant uh, mass movements and invasions, all of this stuff, it's all about money. Uh, so follow the money and you find this shit out. Anyway, so um, this point, here we are with the crypto revolution going on. Now, uh, we're all part of that crypto revolution. Uh, I understand that uh, struggling, working uh, people under duress don't have money uh, to uh, invest the way that um, the powers that be in the 1% do. And this is indeed that particular opportunity in time for everybody that has the capacity to educate themselves about cryptocurrencies and make a shift before the system collapses and they're forced to make a shift. Now, gold and silver, they're great. I love silver. I've got some of it here. Uh, Walking Liberty, uh, silver is really cool. Gold, I don't have so much of. Uh, very expensive stuff. Uh, but uh, you get to a situation where you understand that the species is going to go forward. We're going to make it through this period of time. 
And in doing so, we're not going to be able to be trading silver and gold back and forth to each other because it's too slow. It's too clunky. It's heavy. It takes energy to move this stuff back and forth for no net gain. So it's, it's kind of like this. If we're trading the silver back and forth and I have to, to get silver over to Fred six blocks away in order to buy his eggs, but he's going to give me that same silver back uh, uh, next week to buy my extra milk, well, hey, you know, I might as well just keep it and we work out this little <coughs> thing and settle up every so often. That's sort of what cryptos are going to do for us, especially now that you see that you got uh, gold and silver backed cryptos coming out. Uh, I'm citing the ones out of Dubai in the Mideast, right, under the Sharia law stuff. Uh, so uh, we are entering into this new world. Uh, there won't be an official announcement kind of thing from the G7. They're totally uh, irrelevant. Uh, to this process. We just don't need them. They, by the time they figure it out, it'll have been a uh, done deal because most of us will have gotten into it. Uh, now, you can lose your shirt in this stuff, okay? You got to understand how to deal with what we're dealing, what, what we're actually going through. And I'm going to give you my version of it, and you can take that as a, um, a guide, or you can say he's full of shit, and I'm going to go off and do my own stuff. But at least I won't feel bad, uh, because I'll give you a little bit of a perspective about where I think we're at and why certain kind of things are occurring in the crypto world. And then you can make an intelligent, smart decision, or you can be a dumbass, and, and in either case, the karma is on you. <laughs> it's not on me. Uh, so, um, I've brought, got my little chalkboard here, and I'm going to draw this kind of thing and, and show you where we're at and why, um, and along the way explain to you uh, why I think we're at a certain spot here. So let me just draw it out real quick. Uh, I keep talking about uh, these crocodile teeth relative to the chart patterns in crypto, and that's because our data sets bring up discussion, linguistic things that are actually describing uh, or, or referencing the forecasting, the kind of words that are people going to use to describe these kind of actions. Not being a chartist, I don't know what those uh, what those real words are, and I don't have them modeled uh, in the financial world because I didn't don't come from that world. It's one of the few areas I never actually um, uh, coded. I coded all kinds of stuff. Uh, and so in coding something, you would learn about it because basically you'd have to take someone's knowledge base and translate it into software and teach a machine to do it. Uh, so anyway, so, uh, I never did charting or any of that kind of stuff for a financial, never got involved in that. But right at the moment, we're in this uh, kind of pattern where we have this thing that I'd always called crocodile teeth. And that's kind of like this, um, oh, sort of a weird mountain range effect or jawline effect on uh, charts as the, as the pattern of the uh, action is traced. And so the crocodile teeth, these points here, were all of our significant um, uh, trading action kind of things, these points up here. And so the, uh, the crocodile teeth are sort of key to this, okay? Because you're going to keep hearing over these next few weeks, especially over this summer, you're going to keep hearing a lot of people say, sell, 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 sell. The reason they're going to be saying that is because from their perspective, they deal in these things called candles. Uh, which are these um, references to how the, uh, the price of something moves in a daily pattern. They're referencing candles and all of this um, mathematics that derives, uh, that the candles are based upon and from which, uh, and derived from, uh, all of those things relate to charting patterns and stuff that were developed in the process of the uh, debt-based currencies, sovereign currencies, the stock markets, and all of that of the past 40, 50, 60 years. And it's all quite fine, I'm sure. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily apply at the moment, in my opinion, because we're in a, we're in a period of time when we're going to go through uh, episodes, episodic hyperinflation. The episodic part of it is all the people rushing out of one system into the cryptocurrencies, a lot of people freaking out, taking profit, and rushing back out, and then back in again, and so on. This is going to create these periods of time when, when people will tell you, and they're quite perfectly correct, and at one point they will be absolutely correct, okay? And they'll tell you that, oh my God, this stuff's going vertical. You've got to sell now. That's what I mean by selling into strength. If you're paranoid and you want to sell, well, you sell when the stuff is going vertical and, it, and people want to buy what you want to sell. And so they're going to be talking about, literally, about things that are like, um, let me just draw it out. Okay, so they'll be talking about a chart pattern that will look like that. 
that'll go up uh, and look almost parabolic. And they'll say, oh my God, that's the first sign of a big crash to get this kind of stuff going on. And they're not wrong. And at some point they will be correct. I don't know when that point will be and you'll have to make a decision about it. Because what I'm um, describing uh, in terms of this hyperinflationary hyper episodic flow is a series of these vertical uh, waves, so to speak, very much like waves in a swimming pool or something in an earthquake, where they splash way up and then they crash back down. That's what's going on in Bitcoin right at the moment and all the other cryptos, is that we reach one of these walls and then we crash down. That's what it takes to form crocodile teeth within the charts. Now, okay, so now we've gotten a little bit smarter because um, over this past episode, uh, this is the 28th, over this past week, we've seen the end of one of these creations. So over this past week, we've seen a crocodile tooth form. And it, the crocodile tooth went up, it rounded off at the top a bit, like all good crocodile teeth, but still pretty sharp for us. Comes back on down, and then it went bumpity 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 bump, down some more, and now it's going back up. And that's really, that's our dentition here for our crocodile teeth. This is the point of it. This was like the 2800 mark. This little bumpity bump bump business, that was like 2300, which kudos for me that we saw that in the data. I just didn't understand what I was looking at. And then the bumpity bumpity bump part here, this is our duration, uh, our duration of the uh, recovery period or consolidation or whatever. And then this here is our uh, uh, secondary uh, fall, and then there's the gap, and now we're back up. Now, the thing is that each and every time we have this happen, we're going to form another one of these crocodile teeth. And so this vertical wall will cause our problems. Okay, miracle of editing, and we're right back around past the failing battery. Okay, so, so we're talking about um, dentition for crocodiles here as it relates to, to cryptos, all from a guy who's a um, oh, yeah, <coughs> known woo-woo guy. <laughs> so don't take any of this stuff seriously. We don't know what we're doing. We're just making it up as we go along. So there's your disclaimer. No financial advice here. Now, what I actually do think is going on is that these individual crocodile teeth here are these little spikes that we're seeing ascend that were described in our data like this. As though <coughs> the jaws, uh, the jawline of a crocodile. And... Um, this jawline of the crocodile goes out some some distance. What the hyperinflationary event is giant stolen wealth of the one percent trying to go out and go into cryptocurrencies. And so the giant stolen wealth of the one percent is going to take years, decades to get into these cryptos. They can't just shove it in there or instantly you'd have a uh, Bitcoin be worth, uh, you know, ten million dollars or something. Who knows? Anyway, so we're at one of these little uh, crocodile teeth right here. Now, you can't see it on my fine uh, charting technique here because it's, the resolution just isn't that much, even if I, <laughs> I shove it up at you. Uh, but each one of these teeth here is like this kind of a structure, right? And so we're in this little point right here where we're recovering from the building of the of the sharp biting part as well as the mashing part of that crocodile tooth. And then it's going to go on up like that. Um, and so, uh, this is the overall pattern. Now, at some point, the people that tell you it's going vertical, it's in a bubble, you need to sell, at some point they're going to be correct. And what they'll be talking about is when finally, almost all of this material here is over here, and cryptos are about the same level there, uh, then they will be correct. But until then, they're not. And at that point, what'll happen is you'll go up one last vertical wall, you'll form one last tooth, and then it'll be like that the rest of the way out. And then, in my opinion, all of the, the charting tools and techniques and stuff that have been developed over the last 40 years and things, they'll work when we're in that period. Uh, but I don't think that they are working in our hyperinflationary period. Now, I've, I've invented some new charting tools I've never seen expressed anywhere else that seem to be guiding us through through this little um, 
uh, period here, in addition to the, the stuff we call the WebBot data, okay, uh, in addition to that database, I've actually tried doing some charting and I discovered something that's like, oh yeah, this kind of works. And we'll see if it, if it works over time. If so, it'll only work through the hyperinflation and anybody that tries to rely on it back here is going to get screwed. Um, uh, because it's like a um, uh, hyperinflationary, um, sort of like Max Planck, Max Planck's constant. It's a hyperinflationary constant effect for charting that, that describes what we're going through in this individual, um, in each and every individual tooth creation. So, uh, each and every one of these teeth, this is your trading range here. All right, this is the area in which you can expect to be able to sell your bitcoins high and buy them low, or fuck up and sell them low and have to buy them back higher. So, you got to know where you're at within this range. Uh, be very careful of trading clubs. Be very, very, very careful of trading clubs that are based off of my material, uh, especially if they're stealing the stuff. Uh, you don't know that if they're getting my material accurate. Uh, so yeah, I understand not everybody can afford the reports at $99 each. Uh, I'm obviously trying to profit from this particular point of the hyperinflationary period of time because I see it's happening. Um, you know, sort of like actually proof of the pudding. If I wasn't doing this, I'd be really stupid. You know, if we're right here in one of these periods of hyperinflation and uh, I could do this because I was smart enough to do this. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but like the, um, there was this Greek philosopher they, they used to give him uh, and all of his friends supported him and finally he realized, well, if I'm as uh, philosophically uh, smart and accurate as I think I am, I shouldn't be relying on them for support, so I got to get out and do it on my own. And he came up with this idea that we now call options. And uh, so, uh, again, in my particular case, if I'm as smart as I think I am, then I should be able to do this. And, and I am doing this, so, you know, but, but um, uh, as I say, uh, you know, don't base uh, your decisions on someone else's thinking. Uh, read my stuff, go out and do your investigation, uh, see where the hell we are at, get contrary opinions, because a lot of them are accurate in the moment, especially. Uh, so uh, just, you know, uh, check it out. Your karma is your own, and, and this is a real uh, fierce adult world of um, uh, cryptocurrencies, and, you know, don't bring a knife to a cryptocurrency fight. You're not going not gonna to win. So anyway, so that's where we are with all of this stuff. Um, Ah, whew, at wrist. Anyway, so, um, all right. Yeah, we're working out the math, uh, and we're bringing out the reports telling you uh, certain cryptos that are showing up in the data as having, you know, aspects and attributes that um, might make them profitable for trading. Our reports are entirely intended for trading because there are a number of people that are like myself that are... Um, uh, old enough to need that extra edge because uh, a lot of these people didn't save for retirement. Uh, and there's also a lot of young people that are really crushed under the debt uh, that's been heaped on them for all this, uh, these generations. And so I'm trying to do what I can to get, get these people a little bit of a uh, step up. And uh, it, it is possible to do so, but you have to do it in a very smart fashion. And lots of people are going to lose fortunes in this process. So, uh, be adult and research, 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 read lots of um, uh, stuff. There's, everybody's got uh, access to uh, all the forums where the Bitcoin people hang out. And uh, if you just read it after a while, it'll sink in, you know, like osmosis. It's like, oh yeah, I understand what that means now. You know, because I've heard these people argue about it or read these people arguing about it for long enough. So you get it. Okay, so. So there's that aspect of this. Oh, one, one other thing. Uh, you're going to hear things about, uh, oh, the latest, ah, the latest and greatest um, uh, um, new cryptocurrency. It's going to be XYZ QRT, okay, or whatever the hell. Uh, it doesn't matter. And, but you have to understand something about software. If it's a really good idea, and it's software, and I've got a cryptocurrency as well, hell, I'll implement that really good idea in my cryptocurrency and take away your advantage. Software, it's ideas. They float. And so software can implement uh, ideas very rapidly. So if someone's telling you and touting a particular uh, coin as having some really cool feature, and that's why it's going to be good, and that's why it's going to scale, and so on, and, and you know, be faster in, in terms of sucking out money from the um, uh, old system than other currencies, be very wary of this. And that's because there 
are no real barriers to intellectual use of ideas. So nobody's idea in a crypto is going to stay their idea. Um, you know, as a software guy, I know. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I won't go into details. I know. But, you know, I mean, it's a, the design world like that. Uh, you're out looking constantly for something you can implement to make your product as good or, or better. And so you're constantly studying the competition, so to speak. Uh, this is why I know cryptos are, are anti-fragile because they're all going to be stealing and piggybacking from each other and they're not going to take the crap. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, so there's that. Now, speaking of crap, um, I'm really like uh, irritated because the uh, certain personalities out there uh, causing problems, uh, not only for me at a personal level within my data sets, uh, but for the planet in general with the, their activity. And so this is one of those things where I'm calling out people for bad behavior. And it's at a personal level because there's so much um, uh, beginning of a ruckus going on that is starting to create ripples within my spiders, within my data gathering. And this is directly within the woo-woo world. And so I think I found a conspiracy within the woo-woo world. <laughs> a conspiracy within the world of the conspiracy uh, um, conspiracologists. Anyway, uh, it's about this guy by the name of James Corey. Okay, now James Corey uh, is being um, uh, marketed under the name of Corey Good uh, by this fellow by the name of Del uh, David Wilcock. And these two guys have really polluted the, uh, they've been pissing in the woo-woo pond is what it is, and I'm really irritated. Uh, I find the crap from their, uh, from their bullshit, from their um, fantasies, from their fictions, are intruding on our data sets all around at various different levels. And I understand why it's going on. Some of it's related to these unknown energies from space that are getting through. They're causing us all to go batshit crazy and making us all jittery anyway. But um, uh, the others are just because of how humans are. Uh, so it's very irritating to find that we're being um, manipulated at a mental level by the Hollywood machine as they shift out of movies and are trying to capitalize on um, sort of like a new form of um, uh, franchise, which would be like uh, influencer franchise uh, within a niche demographic. There's a name for it, I'm sure. I'm sure they've got some zippy name for it, but I don't have that identified at the moment. Anyway, uh, my buddy here, uh, Jay Widener, he's um, calling him out on this too. He's with uh, Guyam TV. And he's responsible as well, putting these uh, two bozos on and giving them um, unfettered, uh, unrestricted, and politically correct um, access to a broadcast media with some level of uh, authority, if you will, from the corporation viewpoint because of this guy on TVs, um, you know, they've got big money and they, they look like they're a, a slick production. Well, they are. They're a slick production. Jay does good work. I mean, there's no question about that. And so Jay's work itself, the fact that he's able to produce uh, so well um, is really, <laughs> that's really what I'm bitching at. <laughs> Jay, if you, were, if you were worse at this, they wouldn't be such a problem. Uh, but Jay's good at this, and, you know, and, and David Wilcock and Corey Good have gotten a lot of credibility, and Corey Good's full of shit. Um, uh, Bill Ryan has called Corey Good a pathological liar, and uh, the, uh, there's uh, reports out there by dark journalists, and they basically put Good as a uh, liar who's being... Um, uh, who's fodder for a uh, marketing and harvesting machine. And I, you know, I have a tendency to agree. That's, that seems pretty correct here. That seems pretty much the case. And, you know, the fact that he's talking about uh, big blue chickens, you know, I mean, and it's yet another big blue chicken cult that he's trying to promulgate. It, you know, the, the details are not uh, the issue. What is the issue is that he's really pissed me off personally because he's claiming to be one of the people that are flying the ships that I see up there with my night vision goggles. He's claiming to be involved with that whole uh, secret space program, and he's taken the whole secret space program stuff and brought it down to the level of uh, a comic book you would read um, in an outhouse. Uh, I mean, the guy has, uh, and it's derivative. It's, uh, it's not even particularly good stuff. Uh, it's derivative, and I don't even think he did it all on his own. I think it's a mind think here, or a group think. I, I, it doesn't seem like an individual 
um, pristine level of thought. It's all muddied as though there's <coughs> various different minds that have put in stuff here. Uh, and it's a, a, a very uh, disconcerting development on a couple of different levels. One of the reasons it's disconcerting, uh, beyond the, the ripples that it's causing in our, uh, or that are noticeable within our data gathering, um, is that uh, it's actually polluting the, uh, a period of time um, where we are actually getting very close to some form of realistic uh, disclosure. And here we have, uh, you know, uh, comic book good, uh, you know, uh, a space cadet good, uh, sweeping through the galaxy, freeing the um, uh, uh, busty maiden from the slave dens, you know? And, and it's like, well, that's good theater uh, to a point uh, for, uh, you know, a diminished mind. Uh, but it reminds me of these play fests that are over at colleges, you know? You got college people that are supposed to be adults and they're uh, pimping play days for them and, you know, safe spaces. Uh, something is wrong with this picture. And so there's a lot wrong with the Corey Good uh, story uh, being promulgated by James Corey and his wife and David Wilcock and being promoted as, in a very slick fashion by Jay Widener and Guy TV. Now, I don't really, you know, it doesn't impact me other than I've had to put in some extra filters and it's caused me some extra work within my data sets. It does impact all of us in the sense that it's diverting us and taking attention away from a very um, key element of life at a very key time uh, with something that is horseshit. And so um, I'm actually reminded uh, uh, linguistically of a period of time, and this is sort of a warning um, because it's in the data this way, and I, I, want, I don't want anybody to come to harm. I don't want Jay and, and even James Corey, I don't want him to come to harm. He's obviously a troubled individual, as are we all. We're all mentally ill. Uh, but I don't want Jay or, or these guys to come into any harm. But there's a lot of the linguistics here that we've got that is similar to uh, the Amy Semple uh, McPherson episode in the 1930s. And uh, people were severely damaged by that for the rest of their lives and many lives were damaged by that episode. Um, and the, it's happening all over again, relative, the, the language, the under, underlying emotional tonality of the thing, even though there, there is no apparent uh, connection between Amy Semple McPherson and the Foursquare Church and the abductions and all of that of the 1930s and Corey Good's story at this point, the data, cast, data is forecasting um, a particular path we might be on uh, that would suggest that that would come out. So uh, at this point, we don't have to go through that harm, guys. You guys can do something. I don't know what, but you need not uh, continue down this path. And uh, just sort of like fair warning, uh, you're bringing up language that I don't think you're going to really want to live with. And uh, it's extremely disappointing, too. You know, I mean, David Wilcox not stupid. Well, he is stupid, but um, uh, there's flashes of insight in there. Um, in any event, but he's stupid by, you know, this, uh, he's a janky promoter. Uh, I, I've got to say it, you know, that's how Ice Cube would define him in a movie. Oh yeah, the, you know, David Wilcock, he's the janky promoter uh, fellow. And uh, Jay Widener, is the, he's the guy in the background, you know, the, he's not the money man, I mean, but he's manipulating for the money man. So he isn't Mr. Big uh, Warbucks. Uh, but that's where, where, that's the kind of world we're dealing with here. Uh, relative to what's going on in Woo Woo. And this matters now, as we'll all see over these next couple of months. It's going to be an interesting summer. So that's it, guys. Watch out for the crocodile teeth if you're into trading. Uh, watch out for trading clubs that are based on my data, especially because I don't know that they're getting it accurately or interpreting it accurately or know what the hell they're doing. So I'm not warranting any of them. And if you're not reading my stuff right off of my site, you don't know you're getting it accurately. And we've already had instances, especially with people taking the... Um, material and translating it into other languages where they really bollocked it up. So be real careful. Uh, I'm not responsible for your stupidity in, in how you deal with the cryptos, nor am I responsible for your success. Uh, so don't ever try and give that to me either. Um, the only thing I might be responsible for is a little tiny pinprick in your consciousness and of awareness about the cryptos at a particular time. Um, anyway, uh, best of luck to all of us. Uh, you know, Somebody should go give Corey Good and David Wilcock and Jay Widener a kick in the ass. I'm old enough and I'd do it. 
Uh, I don't care how big Corey is. Um, or David Wilcock. He's added a few pounds. He's a little, he says he's beefing up. And that'd be fine, you know. If they're really offended, I'd love to have them come to Olympia, Washington, because I don't travel much. Once, once the EM50 is available, maybe I will. And if they'd ever like to, you know, in Washington State, it's safe, right? I can invite people to come to Washington State to actually have combat with me because we're a personal combat state. So if I've offended Jay Widener or, or if I've offended David Wilcock or if I've offended Corey Good, and they wish to take it out and approach me physically, uh, look, come to Washington. Uh, we've got my Aikido Dojo downtown. Uh, and they'd be more than happy to, to let us have a Friday night um, uh, open mat day uh, for such an uh, uh, interaction. And it's a personal combat state. First person that gets knocked down, you got to step back, and uh, that's it. So um, uh, please, if I've offended you, come and let's discuss it. Otherwise, you know, fuck you.